Hello, everybody, and welcome to the City's Digital Consulting Webinar. This month's topic is a build along for laser fiche forms. This is a little different from our normal standard process, so we'll kind of walk you through what the plan is for today in a little bit here. But what we're basically going to do is build a process in forms with a supporting workflow together. Um, today presenting is myself, Jessica Welsh. I'm the director of consulting here at Cities Digital. And we also have Mitch Gardner, who's one of our system architects here at Cities Digital. He's probably helped a lot of you with your laser fish configurations, but he's an absolute forms and laser fish guru. So he'll be available for all of your questions and helping you kind of follow along this process. So our targeted process today is going to be an HR pre-boarding process. So this is something where we would implement this process to uh, support our internal uh, organization's processes once we hire an individual, but before they actually start. So basically to get everything ready for them. This process is something that's easily adaptable to the HR onboarding process once an employee is hired or for really any other processes that you have in your organization where a number of different people need to complete tasks or checklists as a part of an overall bigger organizational process. So let's talk about what we're gonna to do today. Today is gonna to be a build along. And so what this is, is we're going to give you visual and audio guided building of this laser fiche forms and workflow process. We're going to provide Q and A help through the messaging application that's available through your GoToWebinar interface. And I'll show you that in a second. And our goal for today is by the end of the webinar to have a ready to deploy process. So even if this isn't something that your organization is implementing today, just walking through this process and getting this in place is going to give you a lot of different practice with valuable skills that you can apply to other processes. So let's kind of look through how we're going to all get through this together. So as we go through, um, I'm going to be demoing the process for building this HR pre-onboarding pre process on my screen using all the laser fish tools that you should have access to or you would need access to if you're building along with us. If you have any questions or get lost at any point, look in your GoToWebinar interface and identify the questions tab. And then if you click on the little triangle next to questions, you'll be able to get the drop down here where you can type in a question. And then Mitch will be standing by to answer your questions. If you want to test him, go ahead and send one now. <laughs> and he can type in the answer here. If you send to all, then everybody can see the Q&A uh, as we go along through. So here's a couple of tips. Um, because we have a large audience kind of going through this together, I'm going to keep kind of moving through as though assuming people are, are following along and kind of keeping up. Mitch will interject if we're getting a lot of questions on the same topic. But otherwise, we'll just kind of go through the process of implementing this and keep, keep kind of going through. But if you have questions, Mitch will help you um, through the text. Uh, so tips for success, if you have any advanced customizations that we're not going to show, uh, we don't have time to show every possible configuration and customization of the laser fish form in this webinar, but I would like you to notate those either using the laser fish notation tools in the program or just on a piece of paper next to you. So if you want to come back and say customize your theme or colors for your form or add a few more fields, let's do that at the end as um, part of your follow ups after this webinar. The second question is ask questions right away so that if you are stuck on something or if you don't see something, you can kind of get caught up right away. So use that Q&A or chat function of the webinar. And then the third one is um, this is the first build along webinar that we've done. So if you have feedback or you'd like to see a different topic or you have um, something that would be more helpful next time, please use the survey that's available at the end of the webinar to give us real feedback on, on what, what we could do to do it better next time. And if you happen to get completely lost um, during the build along, know that the webinar is recorded. So you'll be able to access that recording and play it and pause it as needed uh, if you want to go and try to implement again. 
If you really like to just get one on one guided help, we can set up an individual session with one of our system architects where you can go at your own pace, but have somebody um, hands on to help you with the rest of the setup. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're gonna to use today. So here's our tool set. Um, this was sent out in the pre-requirements -re pre for the webinar, but we're gonna use these products. If you haven't already, um, please open them and log in at this time. We're gonna use the LaserFish client. I'm actually gonna use the web client, but if you're more familiar with the thick client, you can use that as well. We're gonna use the LaserFish admin console uh, for some template work. We're gonna use LaserFish Forms and the Workflow Designer. All right, so let's go through what the process is that we're gonna set up. So this is a checklist for, as I said, pre-boarding. Pre so getting ready for a new employee to enter your organization. So first thing we're gonna do is the recruiter or manager is gonna fill out a LaserFish form with just some basic information about the new hire. Then the HR manager is going to review that form, make sure it looks correct before sending it off to people to get set up. So they have the chance to approve or reject the submission. Then if it's approved, the pre-boarding team are going to be assigned tasks. These are things like IT and possibly the manager who needs to get things ready. When everyone has finished their pre-boarding tasks, the manager is going to be informed the employee's manager is going to be informed that everything's ready. And the initial form is going to be stored in LaserFish. All right, so here's the steps that we're going to build today to support this process. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a template from the business process library. We're gonna download that forms process and we're going to import a briefcase into our LaserFish client as step two. If you haven't done this before, this is a great way to automatically create folders and templates in your LaserFish repository, as well as uh, fields. Then we're gonna go back to forms and we're gonna customize the process that LaserFish built for us as a template. So this is a great exercise to get to see how to modify fields that exist already or update um, basically any kind of templates. And we're also gonna update the process. So we'll show you how to go through an existing forms process and modify it for your organization. We're going to then go back into the admin console. And this process comes with a text field. So we're going to uh, change that to a dropdown because I like to have my employee fields be dropdowns so they're always the same. There's no chance of misspelling. And we're gonna manage that automatically with a LaserFish workflow. So we're gonna write a quick two activity LaserFish workflow that will automatically add all new employees to your dropdown. For anybody who uses dropdowns to manage dynamic lists, a lot, of, a lot of you use this with SQL and dynamic templates. We're gonna show you a little bit easier way to do that today with just using a workflow to modify just a regular dropdown. So anybody who doesn't like SQL or <laughs> feels intimidated, this is gonna be a great workaround. And then uh, if we have time at the end, we'll go through the whole process end to end and test it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using a virtual machine here. So if you haven't had a chance to log in yet, I'll show you how to log in to each product now. So the first place we're gonna go is to LaserFish Forms. So you're gonna log into forms. If you've never done this before, it's your server name and then the and then forms. And you may, the first time you log in, go into the inbox. But we're gonna to go to the design tab. This is where we go whenever we want to create a new process. So in the top blue bar, click on design. And then you're gonna see your business process library over here in the menu on the left. This is where LaserFish stores all of their templates for pre-built processes and forms. If you haven't seen this before, there are tons of good relevant 
examples. They're always updating this with new processes that are suggested by people on Laserfish Answers or from clients that they're working with. So this is a huge wealth of information. And we can search by category or by complexity. Right now, I'm going to search new hire. So if you just want to type in new hire, you should get two results. And what we do is this contain each one of these results contains all the configuration files that you need in order to be able to build these processes. So we're just going to click on new hire pre-boarding, pre-onboarding. And what it's going to do is show us some screenshots and a description of what the process is. So we kind of already went through this, so I'm going to skip right ahead to the download files. And if I click download files, you see I'm going to get a new hire pre-onboarding repository briefcase. Depending on what process you're downloading or working with, you might get workflows or some other files, but for today we're just getting one briefcase. So I'm going to click on download. And this is going to download this to whatever my normal download location is on my computer. If you're using Chrome, it should show up down here in the bottom of your browser. And if you right click on that, you can click show in folder. And that will show you where it downloaded to, which will make it real easy for you to drag and drop into Laserfish, which is how we get briefcases into Laserfish. So here it is right here. All right, so now I'm going to log into Laserfish. So if you haven't already logged into your Laserfish client, now's your chance to do that. I'm logging into the web client, but again, if you feel more comfortable logging into the thick client, feel free to do that as well. So for ease of following along, I'm going to be logging into a completely empty repository so you don't see a lot of clutter in my repository as you're looking for what we're following along with today. But it's not necessary to have a completely empty repository. All right, so I'm going to click import here, which is in the upper left if you're in the web browser. And I can either drag the file or I can click browse to upload the file into Laserfish. Since I already had it open in my downloads folder, I can just drag it here and drop it. And then I can click OK to bring that briefcase into Laserfish. So when I bring a briefcase into Laserfish, it's basically like a zip file or an install file, kind of, for Laserfish. So it can, in, it can include folders, like entire folder structures, including documents or even records management setup, as well as template information. So when I click OK, it's going to start telling Laserfish to create that infrastructure. So click OK. And then it asks me where I want to put this. So if you already have an HR folder where you're starting to manage your HR items, or if you have a place for um, these types of forms, maybe, you can go ahead and click Browse and find the folder in Laserfish that you would like to put this. Basically, it's a pre-boarding collection folder for those initial forms. So you can go ahead and, and select the folder where you'd like to import it. I'm just going to put mine right off the root and just say merge with existing folder structure in case you have folders already. So this is just determining where those folders will be, or sorry, where those forms will be sent. And then the next thing it's going to try to do is it's going to try to create the template. So we're getting a new template from the briefcase. It's called New Hire Preboarding. And then um, we're going to leave this ignore fields off and leave this unchecked. We're going to do nothing basically except click OK here. And that's going to go ahead and automatically create fields and a nice template for us that's going to match up with our forms process and make it real easy for us. All 
All right, so now you can see I have a folder. It's called Business Process Library. And then under that is New Hire Preboarding. And there is one sample form in here. This is what our form is gonna look like. So once we're done, this is just an example. It will include the template that it made as well as just a sample image for us, just so we know what we're gonna be building. All right, I'll give everybody a second to catch up with importing their briefcase. And then when you're done, head over back to forms. And we should be able to see this pop-up still here from our new hire pre-onboarding process. Okay, so we've completed step one. We've downloaded the files and imported the briefcase. Next thing we're gonna do is import the process. And all that means is basically setting up the Laserfish forms process template for us in forms. So the next thing we're gonna do is click on this green button with the number two on it. And when we do that, it's gonna say we can rename this process. So if you are like a lot of our clients and you're starting to set up Laserfish Forms processes for a number of your departments, you may want to add your departmental naming convention in front of the process name. So if you name it by department and then say a bar and then you hire pre-onboarding, you can add that at this time. Once you're comfortable with the name, you just click create and it creates just a normal forms process template for us. So the process is there and the forms are there. Uh, we do have to customize it to our environment, right? Because Laserfish made this in a test environment. And so that's what we're gonna go through next. That should take a minute to load, but you can see the process kind of coming into place here. And so I'll give everyone a second to get caught up with this. And then once you get this in place, so once this is completed, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger because this is where we're gonna get into the nitty gritty here. Make it a little bigger. All right, if this is your first time doing a forms process, I just kinda wanna give you a little bit of a layout intro here. So this is where we're gonna spend most of our time. This looks and acts a lot like workflow in the Laserfish workflow designer. So if you click on something or double click on it, depending on what version you're on, the properties will show up over on the right. Depending on what version you're on, again, to get rid of this, which takes up most of the screen, you can pull up, press this little collapse, and then you can see more of your uh, diagram. Over here on the left-hand side, at the top, here's our process. That's where we're gonna start. This particular process has four different forms. We'll go through each one of these, um, but I'll show, you, I'll show you how to customize each one of those in a moment. And then at the bottom, we have access rights. So who can fill out this form, who has access to it. Process options, and we're not gonna do custom error messages at this time, but if you wanted to, that would be down here. You can always see the status of this process, whether it's available or not, right up here at the top where it says published or unpublished. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go through and customize the process diagram. So we're gonna start inputting some of our particular information into the process so that we are able to test it in each of your environments. All right, so just like most forms processes, processes the first thing that's gonna happen is this process gets kicked off when the initial form gets submitted. So just some of that basic information about the employee that was hired will get filled out. In our test process here, the next step is the form is reviewed by the HR manager. So I'm gonna double click on that so that I can see the properties. This is the same thing I do with workflow. For every task, 
I click on it and then customize it top to bottom over here in the properties panel. So I'm going to leave the name here because I think that makes sense and the description is fine. But what I might want to do is change who this is uh, assigned to. So I'm going to show you a little trick for testing that you can do, um, but we're also going to customize this. So um, identify in your organization who your HR reviewer should be and then type their name in. If you're just doing this for a test, feel free to type your own name in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this as having two people. So initiator and then the actual person who would in production be reviewing this would be our, my HR manager in my test environment. So this is a specific user and this is an actual token from this forms process, just saying that it could be assigned to whoever started it. If I leave initiator in here, that allows me to test a process all the way through while I'm designing it, um, and then just remove initiator at the end and have it be assigned to just the HR manager once I publish it for real going forward in production. If you accidentally removed initiator, it's available in this list of tokens. That's just like everywhere else you see tokens in Laserfish. And it will just be a user again, which is indicated by the little person in the circle who initiated the process. So for my purposes, I'm gonna have it be two people. Um, if you don't want to do that, you certainly can just have it be yourself. The next thing we can do is decide if we want to allow the task to be reassigned. This would be if the HR manager saw this, didn't wanna do it, <laughs> had to defer to someone else, they could reassign it. You can also check to see, um, to have users get an email when this task is assigned. So I'm gonna go ahead and click edit so you can see what that looks like. So what we have is the subject at the top and you can, we have tokens in here for first name and last name, information review. If we wanted to add additional tokens, we could click on the end of the subject and click on the tokens and scroll down. And we could see all of the different fields that are getting assigned. For our purposes right now, I'm gonna just leave it as is. Um, we don't have an attachment, so I don't have to do anything with an attachment. But at the bottom, in the body, you're able to also customize the instructions. If this isn't something you've done before, this can be immensely helpful to users when a process is either not very frequently completed or if it's for somebody who doesn't interact with Laserfiche or forms a lot. So you could put a lot more instructions in, in here if you wanted to. Um, for our purposes today, I'm going to leave it as is, but I did want to show you. This might be one of those things that you might want to notate as a customization to enhance a little bit after today's session. When you're done, just click the Done button at the bottom. We'll save those changes. And then what I like to do also is if you have the same person testing out and, or doing a number of tasks in a process, I always like to click this checkbox at the very bottom of the properties pane that says automatically load the next task if the same person is assigned to it. So let's say the HR manager has to do this review, approve and deny but they also have to do the next review or the next task. Um, so they'll get the task just pop up automatically so they can go right onto it, not have to go back to their inbox. Okay, so that's it for this task. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that. Again, I'm just using the triangle at the very top of the properties to collapse it. Some versions you can just click off of it to collapse. And the next thing in our process is a conditional. It's an exclusive gateway that says, if it's approved, go to the approved path. If it's rejected, go the other way. This is already set up correctly, so I'm not gonna change it, but I just wanted to show you what's in an exclusive gateway in case you had never seen it. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. 
and show you what the next thing is because this is pretty interesting. So after that, what we have is an inclusive gateway, which allows a number of tasks to be assigned par in parallel. And then what we're going to do is have a parallel gateway on both sides so that all these tasks are assigned at the same time, but the process doesn't move on until all of the tasks are completed. So you can see what our tasks are is we have three different things happening. So the first thing is orientation scheduling by HR. So they're going to, HR is going to schedule when the employee is actually going to um, attend the orientation for the organization. Then we're going to have IT set up their technology infrastructure that they need. And then we're going to have facilities set up a workspace. So you could do any number of these. You can add another task, another, um, you know, if you have more people that are part of your um, pre-onboarding process, you can just drag another user task over. User tasks are in the activities list over here on the left, and they look just the same as the one that's over here. For today's purposes, we're going to work with what we have, but um, you can always add them and then you would just add them into your diagram and connect them with an arrow both ways. For our purposes today, we're just going to double click on each one of these and I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll add in our actual users. So again, we just on each activity, we'll start with orientation, we'll double click on it. So this is our HR manager. So I'm going, oops, sorry, I was scrolled down. I would be able to adjust the name if I wanted to type a description, and then decide who it's assigned to. Again, I'm going to leave initiator in there so I can test the process all the way through. But I'm also going to choose a user that will be my production user. In case they're involved in the testing or they're able to participate, they'll see the emails and everything. I'm going to allow this task to be reassigned as well. I want my HR manager to get a user, so I'm going to leave that checked as well. And then I'm going to scroll down. If I wanted to add a due date, I could do that. I'm not particularly going to do that now, but you can set due dates if you need to, exact dates and times, or based on a variable. So you could make sure that this is completed at least um, a week after the process was initiated. You can also set priority. medium, high, urgent. <laughs> and then again, if I wanted to, I could have them automatically load the next task if the same person was assigned. And then I would just do this for each user task. So I'm basically going to repeat the same thing for the other two users. So I'm going to collapse this one, go down to my tech setup, and I'm just going to assign it to IT. If you have a particular person or an IT group, you can assign it to an IT group or a particular individual who does the IT setup. Again, you can allow the task to be reassigned, have them get an email, and then automatically load the next task if the same person is assigned to it. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. And then the last one, just double click again. This is facilities, right? So this is the person that's going to set up their desk. I have a facilities user, but you might have an individual or a team. I can have them reassign this if necessary, again, with the emails and automatically loading the next task. All right, so now, now all of our user tasks that should be created automatically um, and assigned all together to get ready for the employee are all created. Our parallel gateway is set up correctly, so I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm just going to skip on now to the next phase of the process, which is the notifications of completion and sending to Laserfiche. So this is the last phase in our process, so I'm just going to open up by double clicking on this notification. You can see when you look at this activity that this isn't actually a task. 
This one has a little envelope in the upper left corner, meaning that this is just an email that's going out. So again, you can send this to a particular uh, user or you can send it to um, yourself if you're the one testing it. It's important to note that for this function to work, you do need to have email configured within forms. If you are not sure if email is configured, then I would delete this and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Delete this task because it will hold up your testing later. So if you're not sure, just delete it. But for those of you who do know for sure that workflow, or sorry, email is set up to send out your forms and send out emails related to your forms, then you can go through the configuration here. So now something we haven't seen yet, because we haven't looked at the forms, but that I know, is that we do have the manager's email getting entered into our initial form. So if I type manager or man, <laughs> I will see that manager email is a variable in our forms process. So you can just click manager email and then whatever the person who or the recruiter or whoever had filled out that initial form had put in for the manager, they'll get an email. So the manager actually hasn't been a part of this forms process up until now. So it's not necessary that they're, they're logging into forms or doing anything. They just get a notification email. That can go to really anybody in your organization or even external. So click manager email. Again, the subject has some variables in it. So first name, last name, account has been created. You could attach the form if you wanted to. We're not going to in this case because I'll show you if we scroll down, a lot of our information is already in the data set. So if we go down to the body, we can see that there is, there are, sorry, there are many variables already set up in here. They're gonna get notification of the employee ID, company email address, company phone number, and company cell phone number if, uh, if that was assigned. If you know already that you don't have a company cell phone number, you can scroll down to the bottom of the body in the email and just select this whole set and delete it. I just press the delete key on my keyboard and that will just remove that part. And then that's it for this particular email. There's no reassigning an email. There's no uh, task. So there's nothing to check to automatically load the next task. So that's it. So I'm gonna click the collapse button again. And then I'm going to just double click on my very last activity here, which is the new hire data form. So this is just sending that initial form into Laserfiche in the um, repository. So if I double click on that, I get a lot of repository options. This is the important part really of any template that you download from Laserfiche because they have no way of connecting to your repository or getting those credentials. So you do need to know um, your password and or have a way to connect forms to Laserfish, and so anytime you see send to Laserfish in a template that you've downloaded, then um, this is something that you'll for sure have to configure. Okay, so save to repository. We're just gonna start from top to bottom. Mine actually started at the bottom, so I'm gonna scroll up. So the name of the activity, we're just gonna leave as archive new hire data form. If you want to enter a description, go ahead and do that. You should see this error, right? This is what I was talking about, how Laserfish doesn't have your connection information. Some of you may already have a valid profile for your Laserfish repository if you've been creating forms processes in the past. If you do have that, you can go ahead and select that from your dropdown. If you don't, I'm gonna show you how to create a connection profile. So this is the one that came with Laserfish that just has their data in it. That's not relevant to you. So what I need to do is create a new profile. You can name your profile whatever makes sense to you. 
I'm going to just name mine laser fiche forms. Um, for, our, for our organization and for my VM, I just use the same forms user to send all of my forms from laser fiche forms application into the repository. Um, next thing you need to do is know the name of your server. So your server might have a name like that. Hopefully it just pops up. If it doesn't and you're remoted onto the server, then it will be up in the remote desktop connect, uh, re remote desktop tab at the top. Might be a IP address. Or it might be localhost. And then once you have the server down, you're going to click repository and then it definitely should identify the repositories. So you should be able to choose your repository that you want to send to. Note that this should be the same repository where you imported that briefcase earlier. So if you had a briefcase, you put it in one of your repositories, this should match. So it goes back to the repository that now has the template that we created and the folder. Next thing is the username. So I use a service account called Forms that is allowed connection rights to my LaserFish repository. If you have a forms general service account, then create uh, or type in that forms username and the forms password. If you don't, for today, you can use your username and password to send that information into LaserFish. Now, the last piece here is going to be to just verify and save. If you get an error, you know that there's one thing that's not quite configured correctly, but hopefully you have the right username and password and the right server and repository. So I'm going to give everyone a little minute to double check that, make sure that they get their profile set up. All right, so once we have that, that means LaserFish Forms, our process is now authenticated to send information into the repository, which is nice because then we'll have an archive of what we've completed. So I'm going to scroll down and tell it what to save and what I want it to look like in LaserFish. So um, I'm going to leave this first one, save a form. I'm just going to save the initial number one form, and then I'm going to leave all of this information as it is. So I'm going to name the documents with the employee ID and the new hire name. Then I'm also going to leave it at the default path, which is where I imported the briefcase. And I'm going to leave the volume the same. The only thing I'm really going to change is this save as PDF. I like to save my forms in LaserFish as TIFFs. They load a little quicker, um, they allow annotations, and they're LaserFish's default format. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. I'm going to click my checkbox up here in my toolbar. That's validate. And that will show me if there are any errors or not. And save. Hopefully nobody has any errors. So we can go ahead and comfortably click save. And then I'm going to go over to my menu on the left and go down from the process diagram onto the first form. And I'll show you how to customize this. So when you click on a form, it shows you the design view of the form. So you can kind of finally get a view of what the form will look like a little bit. So at the top, it's just going to fill in the current date. And then this is what the recruiter or HR manager is going to put in. So the name, the position that we're filling for this person, and the department as well as some other information about both the employee as well as their manager. You can see we have headings to kind of separate out the information, but just enough information to get the basics that we need. Okay, so 
What I'm going to show you is how to customize one of these fields so that if you want to come in later and customize them, that you're able to do that. So what I want to do is click on the department field. You just click anywhere around the word department and it pops up this little menu that says edit, duplicate, or delete. We're going to choose edit. And this is what a drop down field looks like if you have never seen one before. This is your label, that's what the user sees on the form. You can make it required or read only. I'm not gonna do that for this particular field, but for a lot of our critical information, that will be really important. But what I wanted to show you was how you could change or add um, choices for a dropdown. So we have sales, marketing, software engineering, finance, IT, HR, and operations. So if I wanna add one, I can just click next to really any of these list fields and I can hit enter to add a new line and then I can just type in a new department. You can add as many as you like. If you see one that you don't need, you can just select it, click backspace or delete, and then you can remove that entirely. So that makes it really easy for you to set this up to be your particular departments. So I'll give you a minute to finish um, that. <clears throat> and then when you're done getting your departments into the list, or at least a couple in there to start with, you scroll back up a little bit on your screen and click done. When you're editing forms, the information that you're entering is saved automatically and immediately. So you don't have to worry about clicking save on forms editing. All right, <clears throat> next thing we're gonna do is click on the next form down. So if we click on 2A, your new hire pre-boarding, this form contains a checklist. So this is our facilities checklist. So this one, uh, we're going to show facilities, the basic information we collected about the employee. You can kind of see those fields at the top. But then what they're gonna fill out is this checklist down here at the bottom. So they're gonna have to check off that they've completed um, each one of these items. So again, if I click anywhere on next, next to this checklist, I can click edit. And if you know or are co uh, comfortable editing this right now for your facilities, you can go ahead and start uh, updating this. So this works just the same as uh, the drop down where you can remove things that are no longer or that don't apply. So you can just select, like if you don't do office signs, you can just select that and hit delete and that removes it. If you are environmentally conscious and you want to make sure they get a recycle bin, you can add that to the list. And then you can also add other, which we're gonna leave. And that's it. Once you're done editing your checklist, you can click done. And you can see now it's updated with trash can and recycle bin. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go to new hire pre-boarding to b So this one is the one for the HR checklist. So it's the same kind of form where we have the basic information we collected at the beginning and we just show that to them. But then we have at the very bottom of the form, if you scroll all the way down, a schedule orientation. So this is to allow them to select which employee orientation they would like this employee to attend. So if you have a static dates for your new employee orientations. You can click on this drop down list and you can edit it. And then again, we clicked the edit button. And then if we scroll down, we can see the list of drop downs. And then we can edit this to have our actual orientation dates. So I'm going to put a few in here. So we have a few choices when we do testing.
All right, so you can put in whatever you'd like in here. If you don't have a set static list of orientation dates, what you could do is just remove this upcoming orientation dropdown and instead insert a date field. And so what we would do is instead of editing that, we could click delete. And then we could go to our fields over here, choose date and bring that in. So if that's something you're interested in doing, put that on your list as something that you can do as a additional customization after today. All right, so then we're gonna go back over to our list on our left, click on 2C, that's our last form. And again, this is a checklist. I'm just gonna show it here, but we're not actually gonna customize it, just so you can see that this is similar to the first 2A form that we saw where we have just our basic employee information that we collected at the beginning. And then down at the bottom, here's our new hire IT checklist. So this would be, again, something that you could go through and customize, remove anything that's not relevant to your organization, and add additional items as well. In this form, we also have some place for the IT staff to fill in uh, information that they create. So there, if they create the employee ID, they would type this in here. Same with username, temporary password, company email address, phone number, and again, cell phone number. If you were following her along and did the same thing I did with that email template and removed employee cell phone number, you can go ahead and additionally remove this field by clicking on it and then clicking delete. Just to be sure, it gives you a little pop-up, so you can click delete and that removes that. All right, so that's it for our forms customizations that we're gonna go through today. I wanna to go through the last two things here under settings. So if you go back to your menu on the left, click on access rights. You can add whoever you'd like to be able to access this form. So you might want to add, if you have a group, that would be great. I don't have groups, so I will add my HR manager, my facilities, my IT. Oops. Here we go. And admin just to be safe. All right, and then you can choose which role most of these people will be. Some of them are business, uh, let's see, this person is a business manager. And if you have just a general group where you would like people to just be submitters, maybe your kind of general employees group, you can add them here as submitters. And then we're gonna go back to our menu on the left, click on process options. And here's where we wanna make sure that we have this published and we have a friendly looking URL. So see here it says unpublished, that means we are not able to actually fill out this form. So we wanna switch this over to published. And then the next thing down is the link. So we can put a nice friendly name in there that is instead of the random generated laser fish name for our link. And then we're just gonna click save, the big green save button. And now we're able to actually use this process. Before we do, however, we're going to switch over to the admin console and we're gonna make one quick customization that I talked about at the beginning. So for this, again, you'll need to be logged into the admin console as somebody who can edit templates and fields. We're going to click on the drop down here. We're going to go to templates and fields under metadata management. All right, got to log out a couple spots here. I have to kick myself out here one second. All 
Okay, so we're in the in the admin console. We're going to go to metadata management. If you go to templates, you'll be able to see this was created when you imported that briefcase at the very beginning. This new hire preboarding template. And what we're going to do is just look at this very first field that says full name. So I like full names to be, or any kind of name field to be a list as opposed to just text because text allows people to have typos. It allows a lot of different variations which can mess with your workflows. So I'm just going to change the type to list and then I'm going to come over here and click edit list. And then I'm going to just add a couple of the employees that I know just right off the top of my head so that I have a few samples in there. I'm going to add our webinar facilitators here and then click OK and then click OK. So now I have that changed over to a drop down. But what I need to do is have some way for all of our new employees to get added automatically to that drop down. And that's where workflow comes in. So now we're going to switch over to the workflow designer. If you haven't already opened that, go ahead and open it and sign in. And we're going to just create a super quick two activity workflow. So when you get into the designer, click on workflow one. And we're going to just add retrieve field values, which is where we start with almost all of our workflows, right? So if you haven't done this before, this is your designer pane. This works looks kind of like laser fish forms. Let me make this my full screen. Over here on the right is your properties. And over here on the left are your is your toolbox. So while we're in workflow one, we're going to rename it. And I'm, again, I'm going to use my naming convention with HR. And then I'm going to type in a name, which is going to be append employee names to list field. All right. If you feel like you need a further description, feel free to type that in. And then I'm going to click on the connection profile. And this again is just like forms where we tell Laserfish workflow how it can connect to uh, the repository. I am using admin, um, but you might have a workflow user that you're using, which would be totally fine as well. Whatever you normally use when you're designing workflows, you would type in the server, repository, username and password. Click validate to make sure that it can connect and click OK. And that's it for the properties on this. So then I'm going to go over to my toolbox. I always use search because I can never remember the name of every single activity and just tell it what I want it to do. For this workflow, every time a new uh, one of those new forms gets sent into Laserfish, I want this workflow to run. So I'm going to go ahead and retrieve the field values from the form that forms send. So I'm going to say retrieve field information. If I type that in, it gives me a narrowed down list of activities. And what I'm looking for is retrieve field values. I'm going to double click to add that to my design over here. When I do that, my properties changes over here on the right. So I'm going to tell it to retrieve preboarding field values. When I click tab to get down to the description, I don't actually feel like this needs more description, so I'm going to clear that out. And I'm going to click fields here. And the field that I'm looking for is actually just full name. So I'm going to click that. And click OK. And that's it. I just need one more activity to make this workflow work, which is append list values. Or if I don't know what I'm looking for, I guess just type list and then see what's available in my narrowed down list of activities here. I'm going to double click on append list field choices. And then it shows up at the bottom of my workflow over here. And I have my little explanation exclamation point because it's not configured. So I go back over to the properties on the right and it says append list field choices. I'm just going to say append employee 
name list field choices. I'm going to hit tab to go to the activity. And all I have to do is tell it which field to look at and which list to add. So I'm looking at full name as my list field. That's my only list field, but if you have a lot of list fields in your organization, just type full name up here and then you'll see the full name field. Click OK. And then you just have to tell it which values you want to add to that list, which is going to be under, if you click on the tokens right here, and then you click on retrieve pre-boarding field values, we'll click on full name. So now it's reading the full name from the template and adding it to that dropdown. So that's self-maintaining that dropdown list for us. Every time we get a new employee, it will automatically fill that in. All right, so last thing we have to do if you're familiar with workflow is to click this publish workflow button. And it's gonna ask us if we would like to create a starting rule and we'll say yes. And the workflow starting rule is gonna be condition. So when you see this pop up, click condition button. And then we just go through the wizard here to create a new workflow starting rule. And what we're looking for is type equals document. And then we're gonna add a condition where if we click on entry type, and we click on entry. We're going to make sure that it has that template name equals new hire preboarding. For our process, since we're only using HR preboarding for one thing, that would be enough. So we're just going to click publish and finish. And that's it for workflow. So all that's left is to go back to forms and test the process all the way through. So we're done with workflow, we're done with the admin console, we're gonna go back to our forms. It looks like this, because we're still in our design. We, what you can click on is start process up here at the top. And then you should see the process that you just created. So we have our HR new hire pre-onboarding. We just click start. And then we can walk through the whole process. So here's our information. I'm actually just going to fill out our newest hire here at Cities Digital. And I'm just going to quickly fill this in so you can kind of see the whole process go through. Normally we'll start in about two weeks. I fill in, I'm filling in my own email. If you've Built out forms processes for testing. It's always nice to fill in your own emails so that you can get all the notifications and check them. And then if you add any additional comments, you could do that. And so I just click submit, that's it. That's all we have to do to launch this process. And then it's just gonna start creating those activities that we're assigning to users. So we'll go back to forms and go to our inbox. And if you've done like what I've done, you won't see anything in open tasks. You'll see something in open tasks if you only assigned each task to one person. I assigned mine to multiple people, so mine are gonna go to unassigned or available. And then I will see, there's my HR review where I can approve or reject this. If I click on the link, I can see the task, and then I'm able to use this green button at the top to assign it to myself. And then I can scroll down. I can look at all the information. If it looks good to me, I can approve it. If not, I can reject it and the whole process ends. And then once I, once I have completed that task, uh, the next person will see it in their inbox, or if you've done like I've done, you'll see unassigned tasks refresh. 
to have all three of those parallel tasks. So I can open up each one of these and do the same thing. Basically just click on each one, assign it to myself, which again, you only have to do if you've assigned it to multiple people. And scroll down and review the basic information. I can check off each one that I've done. I could make this all required if this was something that was required for everybody to do every one. And then when I'm done, I just click done. The task goes away when it's completed and it goes into the uh, completed tasks for that user. I can go to this, do the same thing for IT setup. This one has some specific information that I can fill out as well as my checklist. So when I've done each one of these, I can check it off. And then I can fill out the employee ID, right? This is something that we would use. And then we click Submit. And then we have one more orientation scheduling. So this is the HR manager just saying, hey, this is the date that this employee will be at orientation. Again, it just has all of the basic information at the top and then a drop down at the bottom where we can choose our orientation and then click schedule. This is the last user, user task. So that's the last thing that you'll see in the inbox. And then what we should see, if we go back to our LaserFish client, we should see that form show up here in HR preboarding as well as that user's name added to that drop-down list for employee name. And if you're monitoring your email, you'll also be getting emails with some of that information. So here's our new hire employee ID, uh, company email address, I must not have filled out, and the company phone number. You can see in your repository, you'll be able to see your initial form that was submitted. If you're using the web client, you can see a little preview of it. If you click on fields, let me show you the field. So we changed our full name from a text field to a dropdown. And you know, or you were seeing me only typing in these two values, but our workflow added this value to our dropdown as well. So we have that going forward. And so that's the whole process, start to finish. Now we have this entire process paperless, easily trackable. If you wanted to then go back in later, you would be able to um, monitor the progress of this process using your monitor tab in LaserFish. And um, you could see everything that had happened in that process. Uh, so that is the entire process start to finish. I have just a couple more slides here in my Prezi and then we'll be all wrapped up. If you have any questions after though, we can stay a little bit longer today. I just wanted to show you again the resources that we use and that are available for you if you want to go ahead and build this or try this or see variations. Answers is great. A resource for LaserFish, it's monitored by tons of users and the developers at LaserFish. The Solution Exchange on the LaserFish website has tons of examples of forms, processes that other organizations have built out, both using the Business Process Library as well as um, the, the individually built, customized from scratch processes. And then our documents and slides for this presentation are available under our Cities Digital Client Portal under the Documents tab. If you'd like to join us next month, we're also going to do a build along, but next time we're going to really focus in on workflow. And we're going to do an invoice approval process where we're going to be able to show uh, token calculators and conditional routing based on the amount. So we'll show how you can send things to different people based on variables. And uh, hopefully again at the end of that work or webinar, you'll have a workflow that's ready to deploy. That's Thursday, October 11th, same time, 1 to 2 Central Time. And then again, classic, we have the t-shirt available. If you could please take a second before you leave or when you leave to fill out the survey, give us um, your real feedback about how this went, um, what you might like to see next time, or any ideas you have for 
webinars or topics going forward. We really appreciate your feedback and a lot of the things we incorporate into these webinars are things that people have sent us or requests. So that is it for today. I will stay on the line for a little bit if people have any other questions or anything else, but otherwise, thank you for your time today. Question, um, there was a question about who can create forms and what you need to be able to do to see the create a process or start a new process design. And the, th the permission that you need is forms creator. And that's actually in the administration section of Laserfiche forms. So if you were logged into the webinar, but you were not able to actually create a new forms process, you just need to talk to your IT administrator and tell them you need uh, permissions to be able to create forms processes. And then you can go back through this webinar and you'll be able to follow along and build this process out.